Um, and thank you for your attention. Uh, attendance. I will basically talk to you a little bit about a uh, uh, PhD project which I uh, defended uh, in December last year. And this is the talk will be kind of a material school which we developed to study fruit feeding research. So I will be talking to you about comparison of a new classification uh, system uh, looking at fruit feeding insects across three different end forests of Panama, uh, Thailand, and my country, Papua New Guinea. So the map just indicates you in, in, in circles where you can see all these uh, three countries. Uh, so uh, as you can uh, uh, now, tropical rainforest is quite diverse in plants, animals, and even as high diversity of fruiting uh, plants, they come in a different morphological uh, shape, uh, size, and, and also colors. Uh, for plants, fruits are a very important uh, food source. They also provide us you know, food that we eat, but also for animals. Uh, they have these uh, traits so that they can attract animals to come when the tree is fruiting. So uh, plants require these uh, 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 traits so that when the animals is attracted by a color, uh, it will be very obvious for certain plants, a certain uh, vertebrate to eat and then in the event, they will disperse the seeds so in this kind of uh, uh, relationship between different uh, traits that are produced by plants are uh, important for the seed dispersal. So to give you some few examples, you can probably know ants, are also known to disperse fruits, birds, uh, which are very obvious, bats, <coughs> mammals, and primates. These are monkeys. Uh, so over many uh, years, these uh, plant-animal interactions have been, uh, uh, have been uh, led ecologists uh, over time to study how eco uh, ecosystem functions work. And uh, in order to do that, uh, this had led them to assign different uh, fruit classification uh, uh, system. Uh, for this, they can able to explain the diversity uh, within our fruit and plant species, fruits. And most of these are assigned by botanists. Uh, to understand the type of fruits, and also geologists uh, to see which kind of animals are coming to the fruit in trees. But for our study, there are very few uh, uh, study has been shown about insects feeding on, on fruits across this rainforest. So uh, for this study to complement uh, we to complement the two systems of botany and geology, uh, we propose a parallel system for uh, insects uh, based on uh, fruit feeding uh, insects. So uh, just to sorry, it's a bit uh, too small, but just to give you a different uh, perspective. Uh, here, if you look at different categories, it's botany system, and this is geology and our system. So if you go through uh, the list, they each identify and describe food based on the appearance uh, of certain plant species. So uh, if you take a old fruit, of course you will find a seed that is one seed. So for botany, they will classify based on particular plant species, they would classify and key them down according to their system. And for geologists, for better way, they would see what kind of animal come to a visiting 
protein tree and they want to see, okay, this particular bird is coming on this plant species. So over the observation time period, they would say that maybe monkey or maybe certain bird species always prefer this kind of uh, fruit. But some fruit are fleshy and some are not, so you can classify and differentiate uh, based on this type. And then for entomology, of course, we are interested in insects, but they play a different role. Insects, instead of disperse, they either kill and they mix the seed. Yeah. So for us, we want to also observe the morphology of, of fruits, but try to uh, indicate what insects is like a main uh, predator. Like they even contribute to some ecological system, which is significant but they also can be a pace, right? So for us, uh, that's our system. So just for comparison's sake, I just put this to system uh, to compare what we just uh, developed. Okay, so the aim of uh, the talk here uh, for this uh, Pochindo was to describe the similarity between plants, surveyed at three study sites, uh, Panama, Thailand, and Papua New Guinea, and the second name was to compare our system, uh, our seed syndrome uh, distribution, distribution across the, the three uh, rainforest uh, plots and across plant phylogeny. So what we did, um, I just want to show you uh, one. Uh, our three study, study sites are forest geos, that's in South, uh, it's the Forest Global Ed Observatory. Uh, this is the network of forest plot that are uh, uh, distributed across uh, temperate and also in temperate. Uh, the idea is to have research scientists, they engage uh, research scientists to study the long term change in. Uh, global science in uh, forest, dynamic, and you also have one in Palang Palangan, Philippines. So this is also one uh, forest plot that is together with this network of forest plots. So, so in this, uh, just briefly, in this uh, forest plot, uh, normally you have a permanent plot that is undisturbed from human. So in each of this plot, first plot, uh, we will mark all the individual uh, trees which debates one uh, centimeter and an area, and all the uh, individual uh, trees are tagged, measured, and identified to a species. So these are then uh, resurveyed and uh, identified and see the uh, dynamic of the forest. If the forest of that particular plant they uh, met at the beginning has died or what happened. So, so you can see, so every five years they resurvey again uh, this plot. So just to uh, give you an idea of this uh, forest here. So uh, coming back uh, to this uh, study on insects, uh, we were able to um, have three years, up to three years of uh, uh, sampling, uh, first and second year. We sample all the plants that are fruiting uh, during this time and collected uh, the seeds. <coughs> and the third year, final year, we decided to restrict our sampling to uh, plant species within 10 families. Uh, this is also to give us enough time and concentrate on most uh, important uh, plant species. So uh, the table just indicates you all these uh, uh, species from 10 families. Eight of these marked by X across are uh, distributed across these three uh, regions. And two uh, pair sites are most locally abundant. So we can see that Example for Benanesi, it's just from uh, Panama uh, and then Thailand and Papua. So they are just luckily abundant. 
So uh, for us uh, in this uh, uh, forest sites, uh, we have like three to four trained field assistants. So uh, each of, of them, uh, we able to collect like freshly fallen fruits or they are unpicked from a fruiting tree. So then we assign all these fruiting uh, fruits, uh, all their samples to a plant uh, species, and then they are assigned to a category, which I will uh, tell you. Yeah. So uh, we have developed eight category. Uh, this is a system for us to to know and also to tell which insects are red from what kind of uh, morphology of, of tree, if it's dry, fleshy, or so then we can uh, know uh, what type of insects are most important and what insects are, you know, coming on, on set it. So if you look at A category, would be the droop, it's a one-seeded uh, uh, fruit. And so if you go on to B, this uh, fleshy or non fleshy fruit with multiple seeds. Yeah? If you eat uh, fruit in the market, you can also uh, tell this kind of system. So C would be the dry fruit, seed, and often wheat. So to give you uh, some uh, a few examples, for instance, if you walk into a forest and we found the seeds uh, plant family from the rest the KC. Uh, uh, we then go through this list and would identify to our best knowledge which of these category would fit this fruit. And then we assign them accordingly. Okay. So A1 would, going, would go for those uh, A category, but if you go further down, it's split based on the morphology, so it will get plus if put 15 measure cup. Yeah? So we repeatedly doing this uh, over our sampling. Uh, yeah. So for Victor uh, Capesi, uh, it will come as dry fruit, but it's seed with like dry wheat. You can uh, stop me if you need to for need more uh, explanation. So once we collect all the fruits, we then bring the samples into the lab, and these are then sorted nicely and are placed in a wearing container. Um, and then photographed, of course, we take weight as well. Uh, and then they are uh, labeled according to some mimic uh, system. And they are covered with mass to allow for ventilation. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, once this is done, we place them on a rearing shelf and we monitor each of this container up to three months. So regularly, someone has to go and see, uh, check if there's any uh, insects else, and then we'll take the ins uh, insects, of course, but then place them and they monitor all over uh, there. So after three months, we check for any uh, insects predation like you see here, and then uh, discard, discard them from the self, and we repeat the uh, uh, cycle again for something. So uh, for this purpose, uh, uh, we took the data for photographing of the seeds. So we were able to photograph 1,192 uh, plant species. And then we use this to compare with the vertebrate uh, uh, fruit characters that was published in, in uh, yeah, that was published. So uh, what we did, uh, we were interested to use our system to compare with two other systems. Remember when I described uh, from the start? So what we did was that we took uh, a vertebrate uh, uh, published paper from Jensen in 1983 and also Gautam in 94. So we were interested because we took photograph of fruits, going to see if our assigned category with, with fruit would match what they have seen 
uh, when birds come to some visiting Afro this so they identify nine uh, colors, and you can see they identify the black plant species producing black colors. Where uh, plants, uh, animals were coming to this uh, color, uh, food color, which is black. And then if you go down the list, the X, that means that they saw uh, birds coming to this uh, food color. Uh, and then if you have this, you can nicely uh, picture on that so that you can see, OK, monkeys like juicy fruit and, and maybe orange. Yeah? So you can kind of really tie them together. So uh, you can see the preference of, of plant and then the animal themselves. So that's what our intention was trying to see if there is some correlation with our uh, study uh, system. So we have this uh, plant species list for three sites. Uh, this is uh, 1,192 plant species list. And we have also our category that I mentioned above. Uh, eight category, and then we force uh, whatever food color in there. So we had eight of or nine of this color, and then I have to uh, use some some external color index to place the photograph, and then to see so to avoid the color bias, uh, we use color constant color index system. So you can put this and then put the photograph and, and match them and see which of this color would match. And then you can write that, uh, put the color based according to the plant species. So then uh, we use this matrix in our analysis. Yeah? So it's, it's kind of more methodical uh, approach to tell that our study should be also uh, important, our system should be also important. So um, this graph basically just uh, showing you uh, on your x, y axis is the percentage of plant species uh, that uh, produce any of those syndrome. Okay? And they are compared against three of the sites. Uh, you can see the found and Basel, basel area. Here we use basel area as, as uh, biomass, as, as indicator to, to ecologically say that our seed syndrome should be also equivalent to the plant species that are uh, able to. So each of these color represent our um, syndrome. You can already tell that uh, as I See, first you can see that a box in green, you can indicate that there's a, a difference in plant species producing most of the fleshy fruit and those that do not. So there's, there is this color from A down to B, uh, at least fleshy, and those below would be dry. So, so this, uh, colors or uh, the syndromes were kind of well represented across. Uh, and some of the, our assigned uh, fruit categories were also uh, produced uh, as fleshy, which is A. Uh, if you recall, A was fleshy, and then B down, uh, the plant species which produced fleshy. And if we go to pick B, which is the data one, you can see it's mostly uh, produced by most of the plant. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, to compare Panama uh, and Thailand and uh, uh, Papua, we can already tell that Pan Panama would be very distinct holistically. It will be very different from Papua and Thailand. So we would say Thailand and PNG, uh, uh, most, they retain most of the similar plant species would have uh, same uh, plant traits. 
And this is indicated, for example, here that you see BCI, we just C1 and C2, this is a plant species producing this food syndrome, uh, which is uh, kind of uh, brown here. So it's quite, BCI has a uh, high uh, percentage of this uh, dryer seeds. And so uh, this explains same idea, but we use color. So you can already say that most of the plant species would also produce lots of the feathered colors that you see often, like brown, black, red, green, orange, and yellow are mostly produced by rainforest fruits, uh, plant species. And there are few colors that uh, are very rare. You see in the forest, uh, blue, purple, violet, uh, uh, not so much seen or it's not so much produced by many uh, uh, plant uh, species. So this would indicate that also that the birds are coming. They are also coming for most of the plants that produce in this brightly uh, footed uh, colors. Um, this is interpreting on a different context, but context, but we look at food syndrome, food color on 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 phylogeny. So phylogeny is the um then phylogeny is uh, represented by a principal compon component uh uh as PCO. So if you split this in half you can also see that Panama was very different, yeah? It's very different, and it's far from Thailand and Papua, yeah? So, as I mentioned before, that Panama is a dry forest, and it has most of the drier fruits, and it's very distinct from Thailand and Papua, where they both have fleshy fruits. They also maintain brighter color, so you see red, orange, and black are mostly produced by by fruit which are uh, plant species that have uh, most of the fleshy fruits. Yeah. So there is clear distinction when we use vertebrate color and we also use our seed syndrome and that's uh, differentiate uh, very clearly. And if you also look at another side, it's just uh, another interpretation when we look at plant phylogeny, uh, fruit color, and forest, tree forest, uh, forest sites. Uh, even phylogeny explains most of this, as well as food color. So um, uh, that's actually what we were expecting. Okay, so this is just another way uh, also to see on uh, what. Uh, Phylogeny uh, three. Uh, when we use its bars, indicate mean phylogenetic uh, distance occupied by plant taxa or or family. But here, other uh, syndrome we assign was not uh, significant. It's only trial seeds. Uh, which you, if you can remember, we are in C one and C two uh, as dry seeds, and they are here. Uh, significant on this phylogeny. Uh, so this uh, ends to to my uh, talk. Uh, just to summarize, uh, uh, we would say yeah that when we compare our system, our system is uh, to understand different uh, type of insects. We also could say that our system is also ecologically important. And it can also explain what we can see, uh, what kind of insects are feeding on what type of foods. Uh, so just to, to indicate uh, one example, uh, this when we use it, uh, gills, like the feeding preference of, of insects, like their mouth part, they would required to feed on uh, what they are specialized in feeding. So we assign them as insects that 
eat and boil inside the seeds and don't step it outside. Yeah? So, so then this system when we place with our, uh, when we use gill uh, feeding mud parts of insects and then we use them according to our fruit seed, they also match that. Remember I said this year is drier, the, as most of the drier fruits, it also indicate that uh, fruit feeding insects uh, for for our study, uh, BCI would outcompete because it has most of the drier fruits and seed uh, seed insects specialize more on drier fruit than flesh. Yeah? So that also gives a, a broader way you can understand and also see and make some ecological this sense of some plant species you see, some problem you see, and this system can already tell you, and you can able to assign and give more priority to certain uh, uh, activities or certain plants that are dying and, and so forth. So that's, that's, I did not talk about this, but this uh, maybe another part of insects. So uh, we already have this also published, uh, this foot syndrome. Uh, we also have two other uh, from my uh, uh, project. So uh, if you uh, want, you can uh, think it's also to, to read for more, more information. OK, so I think I mentioned uh, briefly on uh, forest geo. Uh, uh, my supervisor. Uh, is like a team leader leading uh, Atropod uh, in his big projects. Uh, that we were able to do butterfly monitoring, uh, Malay step, and uh, across three of these sites. And it would be also, maybe if there is interest in this monitoring, you can also contact me and I will uh, advise or tell my supervisor to have it in Palang. <laughs> yeah. So and so uh, finally uh, I have also other interests. Uh, I did uh, uh, my master on, on frogs in Papua and Frogs, PNG Frogs. So uh, we did uh, several I was interested in ecology and distribution of, of frogs. Uh, apart from this PhD. So uh, we, we uh, develop a system to look at attitudinal, attitudinal gradient. Uh, so if you know it starts from lowland, and then if you go up, you see some change in forest. So if you go to higher, there will be lower forest, maybe more grassland, uh, depending on height of the mountain. Yeah? So we created this uh, Five dif 500 uh, difference interval and study the system across this gradient. So uh, I just am working on this uh, uh, results for my paper, but you can see there is obvious uh, uh, Latino uh, pattern as they, they say that if you go from lower and you will reach a mid peak and suddenly all the species directly decline. So that indicate on far uh, graph here that side is the y is the species the similarity but it's similar and, uh, and then the species directly was quite low and then it silently reached a peak and then declined as elevation increases. So that's uh, one uh, study I did also uh, for fraud. And I think this probably, and also if there is interest for this, then I will be most welcome to, to participate. And uh, last, uh, in Papua, there is a research center uh, exactly like like here, uh, but it's led by Czech Academy of Science uh, director 
from there, we saw this uh, coming each year and then leave there. And the activities, purely research, biological research, but the other part, because PNG is unique, and it, it also that we own much of the forest. So we have to have local participation. Yeah. So we develop anywhere we go or want to negotiate, but all, of course uh, train people in this area if there is active research in this area. We, we train them so they, they become also uh, involved and they know us, uh, some technique of collecting uh, and then they like independently do the collecting and then someone has to come and check if everything is correct or not. So we also have program for university where we are tests. Uh, they come for their masters or honors and then uh, they stay there to conduct their research. And uh, what is called here para-ecologist is similar like uh, those um, students who uh, do not have an opportunity for jobs, they apply and then they come, get trained, and then they also uh, actively participate in all the research activities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they become staff and then they, they have basically know the method and understand what kind of insects may be learned, uh, able to identify, and then they can uh, collect based on certain protocols that are given. So uh, with this, I think I have long list of acknowledgements. There are many people who help also for my uh, PhD project, uh, both uh, at these three places. And I want to say Maralit Baran uh, Salamat for your attention. And of course, thank you. <laughs>